This is breaking news on Morning Blend. We're gonna have to relocate until this power outage is, is done. Conditions being forecast historically have led to catastrophic wildfires and PG&E Meteorology is actively monitoring the weather for this situation around the clock. All right, so overnight, PG&E shut off electricity to half a million customers in Northern California. This all in an effort to prevent wildfires. It is the biggest planned power shutoff in state history. Everybody is talking about this thing all over the country. Governor Newsom says people should be outraged. So this morning, we're asking you, are you angry about these public safety power shutoffs? A lot of you are saying on our Facebook page, yeah, you are not very happy with PG&E at all about this situation. What Brandon Ritterman joins us now. Brandon, you've been on top of this stuff for a long time. Yeah. Fire, power, money. Yep. Um, the, the governor weighing in that people should be outraged. I, I wondered about that is at this point in time for the governor to be saying that. Speak to that. I mean, it's certainly interesting when you consider the fact that we confronted him about the political money that he took as donations from PG&E, which he's refused to get give back, is more than eight out of ten state lawmakers, by the way. So this isn't just a one party, one politician Correct. thing. Mm -hmm. PG&E is heavily invested into the politics of the state of California. They have paid to keep themselves at the top, the apex of this power scheme mm -hmm. that they've got going on. And that's an organic monopoly that, that sort of developed over a hundred years. But it's really this moment right now is showing us that the lack of maintenance and the lack of care yeah. put into uh, maintaining those power lines and making sure that they're safe enough to operate when we get windy days, the lack of that work is really coming home to roost right now. And I was just in federal court yesterday where PG&E uh, was talking to a criminal judge because they were convicted of six federal felonies, felonies yep. tied to that 2010 San Bruno gas explosion. And the judge says he's looking forward to seeing how this shutoff plays out. Mm -hmm. He's been putting a lot of pressure on PG&E to do these shutoffs because in his view, I mean, he said it again yesterday, it's better than, quote, burning down an entire county. You're right. And we've seen 107 people die in multiple fires that were blamed on PG&E equipment in the last two years. So, yeah, the shutoffs, they're no fun. No. People are going to have a rotten day or days if this thing stretches. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the lesser of evils is what we're it stuck is. with right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Okay, you, and you mentioned stuck with because, you know, we were you brought up a really good point earlier. Right now, this is what we have. Now, 10 years from now, exactly. we won't accept this as a people from this power company. It, it doesn't feel first world. It. Yeah. I mean, bottom line, it doesn't. We yeah. live we live in supposedly the most innovative yep. state, you know, and we've got all this tech in our backyard and we're doing all these great things and we can't have the lights come on Yeah. with reliability, Yeah. with our own weather. Yeah, people, people will not sit for it. No. no, We understand why, but people are inconvenienced because of what might happen, not what, you know, is happening. So as a business model, you would think this could happen 10, 15 times a year where towns are shut down. Wow. And you multiply that times how many years, there has to be another way of doing this. Well, and it comes down to trust. And yeah. right now, trust in PG&E is in short supply. And trust in the safety of their equipment is pretty much non-existent. That is why we have arrived at this moment. Yeah, okay. Brandon, thank you for thank all you the so work much. you've been doing. Thank you. Uh, with uh, letting people know what's going on. We have an outage map up for you. Yeah, we do. And all the areas in purple are cities and towns right now that are uh, without power. So uh, this all started at midnight. Um, and so it's going to continue. Uh, there's going to be another round of outages coming up, uh, we believe, at noon. So we're waiting for that to see who's next. That would be the second wave of outages. And there's a scheduled third wave of outages, which is the always uh, TBA, yeah. where PG&E is going to reassess the situation and then let us know what's going to happen uh, at that point based on where things are at that point. All right, so a lot of people are asking, when is my power gonna go out? When will it come back on? You, We have a outage map for you. You can get that outage yep. map text to you, 916-321-3310. We will hook you up with everything you need to know. And right now, let's get to our team coverage mm -hmm. this morning for you because we got your back. ABC 10's Giacomo Luca is live at California's Governor's Office of Emergency Services. That's in Mather. But first, we're gonna check in with Carlos Herrera. He's in Auburn. That is one of those cities that has been hardest hit by these shutoffs. Carlos, we've been watching you all morning. It was so dark outside when the power was out. It's brighter now. Yeah, it's more of the same here. More confusion, more inconveniences here in Auburn. We're at a gas station off of Highway 49 and Dry Creek Road. Uh, many impacts by this power shutoff since uh, midnight. Here's the first and most important one of all. 
This is the main gas station off of Highway 49, the one that people see right before they head out of Auburn and head north on Highway 49 to catch I-80. A big inconvenience because it's been closed since midnight. We've seen a lot of people coming in and out trying to fill up as they head to work this morning. They're not able to, and unfortunately, the closest gas station to here is Rockland. That's a 15-mile drive. Another inconvenience is the traffic on Highway 49. It is backed up one mile north and then eight miles south. So getting on to 80 is a big problem. Another inconvenience, business owners. Take a look at this gentleman. He's been here all morning. He's now piling up stuff and loading them onto his pickup truck, trying to save as much as he can. He's been at it all morning long. We spoke with drivers earlier this morning who were pretty much stranded. Here's what they said. I live in Sacramento and I work in Grass Valley. So I put gas here every morning and there is no gas stations are open right now. You're running on empty, so now what? Um, so I'm going to wait. I don't know what's going to happen. I got I got to call my boss and see what what I can do. I'm not even aware when how far down the hill do you got to go to get power? How far down in the, the hill do you got to get go to get signal and make a phone call? It's pretty confusing and and we didn't get any warning. The first I heard about this was yesterday. Most people we spoke with told us that they were only notified about these planned outages yesterday, so they didn't have enough time to plan ahead. Take a look at this business here. Again, closed. You see the employees standing outside, cones are in place, people trying to buy stuff. That's not happening. They're expecting to be closed for the rest of the week. Again, inconvenience and more inconveniences for folks here in Auburn. Carlos Herrera live in Auburn uh, as he's been all morning long talking to the people most affected. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Let's go to Giacomo Luca. And Giacomo is over at the Cal Office of Emergency Services. Yeah. He's been talking to not only Cal OES, but he's also been talking to PG&E. Giacomo? Uh, so this center is well, that's right, Walt. There are a number of organizations from really all across the state, many representatives. They're in this room There's right behind me. Spot. They represent uh, organizations like the National Guard, Cal Fire, um, of course, Cal OES, the Health Department. Lots of different organizations are here monitoring the situation really across the state. But I want to talk about uh, one organization in specific, and that's the California Utility Emergency Association. I want to talk about what they're doing and essentially what they do. They represent uh, a group of uh, California organiz um, organizations that uh, you know uh, g represent all of our utilities so gas and electric, water, uh, telecommunications and what they're doing right now is essentially they have crews on standby all across the state as well as some crews in other states and what they're doing is trying to get permitting so then they can uh, bring in some crews from out of state, such as uh, bringing in generators, bringing in um, pop-up cell towers in the event that when this power uh, outage affects uh, such a large population that they can bring in other services and, and potentially even power um, uh, things like cell towers if cell towers do go down and they run out of even their backup power. So uh, folks here are really planning as much as they can and as best as they can to uh, prepare for uh, what is expected to be uh, at least several days of power out for several hundred thousand customers across the region. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jack Moe. That's a lot of information. They're definitely getting ready. A lot of people affected here. Yes, all right. Let's see what's happening now with our forecast. Rob is in. Rob, uh, the winds uh, certainly have picked up in the last hour. Oh yeah, uh, I've got I've got plant debris all over the place back here uh, in the Gilmore backyard. Uh, it, it this is something that's we're just getting into, folks. You hear the wind on my microphone? You can see the plants blowing around. Uh, this is going to be something that peaks tonight, and for more places in the Sierra foothills, it hasn't been that windy yet. And I know that everyone's frustrated because when it's not windy where you're at, it, this doesn't seem to make any sense. But it's all the wind and the higher elevations that's happening right now where some of these big transmission lines are and what's coming that you want to get ahead of it. So it's frustrating, but the, but there is a method to some of this as, as enormously frustrating as it is. Okay, folks, this is what I'm talking about. Everyone's going to be covered by this, the huge area of a red flag warning, but it doesn't really kick in weather-wise for the Sierra Foothills until about 8 o'clock tonight. It's already ongoing for the valley floor in the Bay Area, and we've seen some gusts 
28 miles an hour pretty consistently in and around Sacramento and starting to spread into Stockton and Modesto as well. Notice where the winds are calm. Again, th what's frustrating is that the wind is lined up perfectly for the valley. It is hugging the valley floor and that's where it's the strongest, but it's struggling a little bit higher up in elevation. But give it some time and that wind field will expand and it will include some of those other places. You know, yesterday we were close to 90 degrees, today 70s with some uh, wind speeds ramping up. So let's time this out. When are we really gonna see it kick in? Well, certainly all day long it's gonna be windy. By tonight, it expands to more areas. Notice that the Sierra gets looped into this and this is the middle of the night when it's dark, if a fire does start, because remember, this is all about fire. I know right now it's about power, but this ultimately could turn into a fire story at any point today and certainly tonight. I'm concerned about that. Last time we saw weather like this for this region, 2017 October, that's when the wine country fires and the fire near Santa Rosa broke out in the middle of the night. I'm worried about that scenario. So you have to monitor this stuff 24 hours a day because I think it's going to be worse when people are sleeping. Walt. Oh yeah, you've been talking about that, Rob. Uh, overnight, it's going to be uh, it's going to be on. Thank you. We did talk to some folks in Auburn before the lights went out. A lot of people were stocking up at hardware stores, looking for extension cords, water coolers, generators, which were pretty much sold out everywhere. Some people saying they didn't feel prepared. We were kind of caught off guard and um, hadn't really thought that the power was going to go out and then, you know, we got all the warnings and everything, but we just kind of thought, oh, it's not going to go out this time because we're a little too far south. It's something that they need to do because it would help safety measure wise, but overall it'll upset a lot of people. I mean, that's, there's going to be power out for who knows how long. They don't even have an estimated time. Good point. It could be days. That Home Depot in Auburn was expected to receive 40 new generators this morning, which will probably go very quickly. Kirsten? 942 right now, a lot of school districts in the affected areas had to decide whether to keep schools open throughout these outages. Classes are canceled for Amador County Unified, El Dorado Union, Rescue Union, Stony Creek Joint Unified, some schools in Marysville Joint Unified, Big Lagoon, Southern Humboldt Unified, Esparto Unified, and Pollock Pines Elementary School District. Over in the Bay Area, we've learned classes are canceled for Solano County Community College, UC Berkeley, and Mills College. Now, we're going to keep tabs on all the school districts in our area, and you can find an updated list on our website, abc10.com, where we've got you covered. Well, all right. Thank you. PG&E has resource centers in the communities without power this morning. Free places to charge your phone and get some AC, but there's only room for 100 at each location. They opened at 8 this morning. And they'll be open till 6 tonight, and they'll be open as long as the power outages last, which may be a while. Look for a list of locations on our website, abc10.com. All right, so 943 right now, lots of people are thinking about electricity or the lack thereof and fire danger. But as ABC 10's Lena Howland found out, we can't forget about how water conservation comes into play in times like this too. I'm Lena Howland in Calaveras County where they are desperately trying to get this message out there. If your power is shut off, you must conserve water. They're recommending no extra use of water, no washing cars, filling up pools, or watering lawns. They're also urging customers to turn off their landscaping systems, take only short showers, and flush the toilet only when necessary. They say wastewater is their biggest concern, coming from showers, washing dishes, dishwashers, laundry machines, and toilets. So if their backup generators fail, it's possible that waste could back up into your home or even into to the street in your neighborhood. You know, that could be a pretty significant impact to the community. So we're going to do everything we can to avoid that, but we really need the help of the community to conserve water uh, to, to take the pressure off of those facilities. This water district has spent months preparing, strategically placing backup generators like this one across the area. But in the event that one of these fails, they say it is critical to conserve your water.